Welcome to my EMNLP21 talk on differential privacy and natural language processing. My name is Ivan Habernal, so let's get started. Um, first, let's ask what we mean by privacy, and here I'll give you an example. So let's have two persons, Elise and Bob, and we might ask them whether or not they have a certain disease, which is sensitive information. And if uh, there is no privatization, we just got the true answer here. So we leak all the privacy. We might also ask a non-binary question, so for example, a vector of real numbers, and again, with the privatization, we get basically the true answer, so we leak privacy. How can we start protecting privacy is to add some randomness in the in the process of answering. So for example, if the true answer of Alice is yes, and she uh, randomly um, toin, uh, costs a toin, then the, the answer might be flipped and we get no. And this is what gives her some uh, plausible deniability that the true answer might be the true answer, that the answer might be the true answer, or it's the coin. And similarly, we can do it for uh, real valued vectors, for example. So we have the true answer here, and by randomness, by drawing from a continuous distribution, for example, we get some um, privacy preserving answers. This brings us to the definition of differential privacy, which is central to the paper, because uh, we are proving that another paper that claims to be differential private is actually not, so we have to go into the details. So here's the definition, I'll give you some time to read it, so you can pause the video, but basically what it's saying, if we have a, the mechanism which takes a data set and produce some value, we say that for any two neighboring data sets, so Elise and Bob for example, so we have Elise and Bob, the ratio of the observing some, uh, the probability of observing some value uh, is bounded by something which we call the privacy budget. So the larger the privacy budget, the larger the epsilon, the worse the privacy preserving mechanism is, and vice versa. So in our example, um, just explaining the definition is basically we have Alice and Bob, and for us these are two neighboring data sets because they differ by one individual. So this is, for example, would be X and Y. And this is our uh, randomized algorithm or privacy mechanism. And the function of this mechanism is basically from a two-dimensional vector into two, another two-dimensional vector. So we call this mechanism also synthetic data release. How exactly um, the randomized uh, mechanism looks like? Um, we might use some continuous uh, distributions to draw from. For example, here, Alice, the true answer would be uh, 1.5. And we might be drawing from a Laplace distribution centered around 1.5 and get some other number, for example, 1.4. And the important thing about Laplace density is that it has a scale. So basically, how much noise are we adding? And the question of how much noise to add to the randomized algorithm is central to differential privacy. And it's determined by something called a L1 sensitivity. So L1 sensitivity is saying basically the maximum distance of any two outputs. So if we have vectors, uh, Elise and Bob, their maximum L1 distance would be, for example, 10.3, and this would determine how much noise we have to add in order to pr preserve privacy and being differential private. Because here, when we finally define the Laplace randomized algorithm, we are saying that uh, for each of the dimensions, we're drawing a Laplace distribution centered around the point, uh, and the scale of the Laplace is proportional to the sensitivity of the function, and also proportional to the, uh, to the privacy budget. So naively, the larger the privacy budget, the more noise we have to add, and the larger the sensitivity also, the more noise we have to add. Excuse me, the smaller the uh, smaller epsilon, the larger noise, and the larger sensitivity, the, the larger scale. So if we have, again, Elise and Bob releasing just a single number, we draw it from lap two Laplacians and the values will be somehow randomized. But the differential privacy gives us a guarantee that we, for any value z, so for example, this would be z here, the ratio whether we observing uh, Elise or Bob is bounded by the privacy budget. So it gives the, uh, the upper bound on the privacy guarantees. And if we're adding a Laplacian noise in two dimensions here, uh, we have to take into account how the Laplacian in two dimensions looks like. So it's a different from Gaussian because it's uh, it has this sort of a square uh, contour. So if you have a look here, we have this square. It's not a it's not a round thing as Gaussian. So now, when we understand uh, differential privacy and Laplace mechanism, we can have a look at ADAPT, which is actually the core of our paper. It's a formal analysis of ADAPT. ADAPT is a paper from a team from Amazon Alexa. 
at EACL21, where they try to um, encode text or transform text to text and being differentially private. So what it means is that, again, we have LEs, which produces some, uh, some text, lorem ipsum, and there's a privatization of these texts, and what, what we see is something which should pr uh, protect privacy, so a little bit different text. How ADAPT achieves that uh, in, in this local privatization is the encoder-decoder architecture. So it's a standard architecture. We get a input text, get some latent representation here, and decode back to text. Where privacy comes here in place is basically here in this um, latent representation by adding Laplacian noise, which we already know. And uh, ADAPT determine the sensitivity of adding the noise being 2C, where C is some, some constant, which we will see later. So far, so good. So let's have a look at this, this latent representation. Uh, in standard encoder-decoder architecture, this is unbounded. This could be anything between minus infinity to infinity. So which would mean there is an uh, infinite uh, sensitivity of this function and it, w it won't work. So ADEPT is doing standard thing, which is clipping um, clipping the vector. So it's something standard for deep, deep learning and they're clipping by L2 norm. What does it mean? So if we are in two dimensions and this would be the constant C, the clipping, all points outside here would be basically clipped here. So everything would be within the distance of C. So far, so good, but there's, as the title says, the devil is in the detail. So we had a look into the, the actual mechanism, and here's some visual intuition what went wrong with ADAPT, um, because the formal proof and all the mathematics in the paper, but here we might see, okay, um, we have Ellis and Bob again, uh, and they are, you know, they have these, these points here in these two, two dimensions, and we have the clipping constant one. So if we clip these points, we don't have to clip them already uh, because they're within the um, uh, C distance from the origin. But the, the issue here is that their L1 distance is larger than 2C. And that's the problem because then if we draw Laplacian noise with 2C, there are some points which will be basically unprotected. No, because this Laplacian noise looks different than a standard Gaussian. So this is basically it's the issue of L1 norm versus L2 norm. So we are interested how bad consequences it can have on the on the pre, uh, preserving the privacy of the data points. And we were we are counting the, the number of pairs of data points that could violate the sensitivity and, and leak some privacy. And when we have even with little uh, latent space dimensionality, so small vectors of 16, we might be leaking something between 40 and 100% of the of the pairs in the data set. So we show that ADAPT was not differentially private, but there is an happy end. We are, we're in touch with Rahul and Christoph and working on, on some extensions on ADAPT2. And I'll be happy to talk about more uh, at the conference. So thanks for watching.